Hello everybody, welcome back. My name is Gemma and I own Handmade Gems. Today is a little video about all tips and just things I've learned through doing markets the past four years. Yes, I've been doing markets for four years. Crazy. My business is almost four years old. I cannot believe that, but I am just so excited to share this video with you as I have seen so many posts recently about market flops and how to improve and all tips and tricks. So I thought I would compile my top 10 market tricks and market tips into one video for you. I have done something similar in the past, but I just thought I needed to update that as that was a couple of years old. I really hope you enjoy this video and please let me know if you have any tips or tricks in the comments as I would love to see what your views are as well. <music> First thing to remember is markets are not easy. They take a lot of effort and a lot of preparation from getting your products ready, getting your signage, your setup, your promotion, everything. You've got to make sure you master that market setup and it doesn't happen overnight in the click of your fingers, unfortunately. I have definitely changed my market setup and the way I go about markets so much over the couple of years that I've done them but I wouldn't have it any other way. It all shows the growth that we've had as a business but also as a person. I definitely have a massive, massive respect for every market stallholder as it's so different going to a market as a customer compared to as a stallholder. You have such a different respect for all the effort that's gone in and all the behind the scenes The customers just sometimes just are oblivious of and that is it's nothing against them. It's not their fault. It's just obviously not promoted that hey I've been up for you know eight hours already I've been working long nights and long days just to prepare for this one market and I think that is just the first thing to remember is markets are not simple they take a lot of effort they are worth it but you need to stick to it and it's not just a oh, I want to do a market cool don't need to do anything turn up it doesn't happen like that <music> second thing is don't get disheartened with markets. They are very, very hit and miss, especially when you're first starting off. You're still learning all the aspects of a market. You're still learning how they work, you know, the areas, everything. So many of them are very hit and miss. I've done a fair few markets in the past that are just not worth it. I did one um, at the end of last year and it, the promotion just wasn't there. It was a small market and it was just, it was a dud. I was lucky that I only paid a very small stall fee, but I only just made that back and probably made like two or three sales maximum. You play by ear and you, you know, work out, okay, why was that a hit and miss? Why did that not work? And some of the factors that I always look at are your weather. So whether if it's too hot, too cold, if it's raining, windy, um, all sorts of things, they can put people off from going to markets. Time of year. So February in particular, which is when I'm filming this, is a very hard retail month. It tends to be the month where people are like, okay, there's expenses, it's the start of year, it's getting back to work, getting back to school, getting everything, you know, back to the way it was and getting into the year. They're not really focused on spending money for leisure purposes. In saying that, other times of the year, especially Easter, um, your long weekends and Christmas is crazy and can be booming at markets. Markets have become so much more popular, especially in Melbourne and Australia recently. Um, over the last few years after the lockdowns, everyone's like, I just want to shop. I just want to go and spend money, support local and support Australian businesses, which is amazing, but it definitely has its time of year. Another factor is the area the market is in. So if it's a really um, kid focused, like a primary school sort of market and you're selling really big bougie paintings and expensive homewares etc you're probably not going to do as well if you went to a boho artesian market for instance so it's really working out the area of your market and working out the demographic and the niche that you're in. My products do so well at fates and school fairs and anywhere where there's kids, because obviously hair accessories kids love. Um, I have lucky dips, kids love. So it's just drawing in and working out that you're working with your customers and with your target audience. The very last factor I wanna just mention is cost of living. 
obviously it has increased recently and it is going to increase and people are just a bit more hesitant to spend now just hang in there hopefully it'll kind of work itself out they'll buy things if they really want them and need them it's just working out the right time and the right factors for you Tip number three is having a tailored market checklist to you. This one is mine. It is going to shine in the sunshine, but I just printed it off. I made it in Canva. I'll pop it on the screen, just like how I made it and everything. But it's just a checklist that has all different things to remember. I actually do need to update this, so I'm going to do it soon. But I've just printed it on craft paper, laminated it, and then I use a whiteboard marker and just tick things off as I go. It starts off with the major things, and I'll pop it on the screen. Um, this isn't my updated one, so I need to up, but obviously it's going to be different for every business. So just making sure that you're tailoring it to you. So my major things are I have three tables for my setup. I have two pegboards. I have a Ikea pegboard for my wristlets. I have weights. I have a marquee, my chair, trolley, price boards, A-frame sign, my banner, scrunchie tubs, everything. All the main things, like the actual products and the displays that I need to put them on are the main things that will need to go in first. And then I have little important things. So they will be business cards, tablecloths, paper bags, pens, scissors, zip ties, wristlet holders, easels, all those sort of things that obviously aren't as important as my products, but I still need them at a market. So it's just other things to tick off. The pack on the day section I have so that I don't leave them in my car overnight. Because obviously you don't want to leave your float in your car. Never do that. Never leave money in your car, um, especially your float. F plus machine is the exact same. So your square, your F plus, whatever you're using, exact same. Don't leave it in your car. I also have my white box, which has a little Panadol and like first aid sort of things just to get me through the day. Snacks, hand sunny, water bottles, blanket, jumper, phone, lip balm, all things that just think of all types of weather. So if it's windy, your lips might get dry. If it's hot, you want to drink. If it's cold, you want a jumper or a blanket. Bonus extras is just a little extra column that I have and it's just if I want to. So I might want a picnic rug to put under my feet. I might want spare letters for the price boards. I might want printed prices, printed insurance, printed COVID safe plan. All those sort of things are not necessary because I've got other copies of them and I don't need them on the day, but if I want to have them, it's good to just have on the checklist. So that is mine, is a really important tip. Um, and I find it just helps me not forget anything because I used to always forget at least one thing, whether that was a display. One time I forgot my float, so, and I wasn't using my checklist. So that just shows that you need your checklist and it will help you not misplace things and not forget things. <music> fourth tip I have is levels and spending money into your stall. So what I mean by this is not spending hundreds and thousands of dollars and getting your setup to look professional. So by this I mean looking into tablecloths. I personally use wedding tablecloths. I'll pop a photo here. Um, but basically these are wedding tablecloths and they're meant for your events and everything and they just hug the table. They're made of spandex I'm pretty sure and they're really good. They make it look so much more professional than just a tablecloth that sits over and blows in the wind this one doesn't and it's really nice another thing is having levels in your stall so nobody wants to go and just look at a flat table that's boring people want entertainment they want to be able to see things at eye level and we've got to remember when we're walking past a stall our eye level isn't down here on the table our eye level is up here how do we get up here? We put levels in our stall. So my levels, pop a photo, are our scratchy boards. Um, I have about, I think it fits 70 on both, like both together scrunchies on our scrunchy boards and they are at eye level so that catches people's eyes i have things sometimes hanging so my baubles at christmas time i had them hanging at the side and at the back i have different levels so i have these plastic things and i use these in the stores as well as markets but these are plastic steps that you can get i get these from daiso or daiso if you're in australia i think it is it's a japanese shop i think um, so it is worldwide, um, but I get these for like three bucks and they're really good and you can use them both ways. So you can prop up a basket or you can use it as steps and kind of use it as levels. You can also get these ones, which are just a straight stand and pop a basket there and then you have a basket there. I'll pop some photos of a stall that I've just recently set up nearby. 
um, but it just gives it some levels and just heightens it and makes it more appealing for customers to walk by and look at. So I definitely recommend looking into steps and ways to level up your product and give some height to your stall is really going to help. Spend a little bit of money on banners. Vistaprint is amazing. I got my banner, this one here, from Vistaprint and it has lasted me ages. I have had to just do a little DIY where things says shop because it used to say Etsy and obviously I just don't have Etsy anymore but yeah I love it I just put that behind my table or in front of my table whatever table I'm using and it works yeah it looks great and it catches people's eyes and they're like oh that's handmade gem that's who I wanted to see business cards are also another must always include business cards accessible on your table I personally also suggest to try and stick to your brand colors so for me my brand colors are the whites and the blues so that like aqua blue that I painted and everything, they're the colors that I try and stick to. I also try and stick to your craft colors. So like the craft paper, like the natural sort of look, as well as timber. I've got displays like this one is a new one and it's got like a pine timber bottom and that's, you know, it's the same sort of look. So just making sure that you're trying to match all your displays will really help kind of make your store look more professional, more eye-catching. And even if it's your first market, people will be like, wow, she's done this before. She knows what she's doing. That looks great. So really putting the effort into your stall and making it look professional, it doesn't have to cost much. You can do it a DIY. You can go to op shop, get creative when you're doing these sort of things. As I said, I've changed my market setup so many times. Pop a photo of when I I started this was my market setup compared to now that's my market setup bit of a difference hey eh? so it takes time Tip number five is pricing. Pricing is really important in any shop, anywhere. If someone can't find a price, they're not gonna wanna ask. Where they want to be able to find a price and stick to it and be like, okay, that's the price, cool. And then they decide right there. They don't wanna have to search for an item, pick up a scrunchie, be like, oh, this is nice, how much is it? And like, look around, no prices at all, and then have to ask you. A lot of the time, people will actually pick it up try to look for a price there's no price pop it down walk away and you've lost a customer just because the prices weren't there and what I do to fix that is my prices aren't normally on my products um, just because the tags and stuff I just like them without them and it's easier to do it that way but I put them on Kmart price boards which I've shown before but I pop a photo they're just letter boards from Kmart I get some from op shops and I've got these ones from Kmart you can find them everywhere and they're really bold and they stand out and I just pop them down on the ground I do want to pop them up behind my stall but I need to find a way to hang them but having them at eye level or where people can see them and look to them straight away is really important if we don't do that you'll lose customers people walk away <laughs> talked about products we talked about displays we talked about markets in general but promotion is really really important if you don't promote that you're going to be at a market how many people are going to come who's going to know that you're actually there you need to promote even if it's just you know a couple of weeks before it's okay just promote every couple of days just say hey come visit me at the market oh if you're in this area i'm at this market today put it out there community notice boards are amazing so on facebook putting them on community notice boards, um, posting to your friends, your Instagram, Snapchat, whatever, sharing to friends and family, getting them to share to their friends and family will get the word out as well. Tip number seven is grabbing people's attention, especially through deals. So market deals are definitely a must in my sort of perspective. I A lot of people don't do them, but a lot of people do. My market deals that I do are I have lucky dips, which I don't have online, but these are just lucky dips of, I call it a misfit lucky dip. So basically they're all scrunchies that just are a tiny bit not perfect. So they might be a bit too small, a bit too big. The sewing might not be as good as normal. And I just put them in a lucky dip charge a little bit less and people buy them lucky dips really attract kids so if you've got a kid focused stall or something to draw them in it's definitely worthwhile doing that the other thing is having like your two for one deals or your two for this deals for instance my scrunchies are six dollars each but at markets i'll do six dollars each or two for ten two for ten really nice it's one ten dollar note they just hand it over they've got cash. $10 is a nice solid amount. And making sure that your pricing is solid numbers. So 
don't do your 99 cents, your 95 cents. That just puts people off at market. They want it easy and they want it right now. If I didn't have my market deal, I wouldn't have sold half of my stock at market sometimes. So many people go through the two for 10 deal. Cause it's just easy. It means I could be like, okay, it's one for six, but hey, you can spend $4 more and get another one. We upsell and that's how we get business. You have to do. <music> We're nearly done, we're up to number eight. So number eight is short and snappy. Be a customer before you're a store hoveter. So if you can, go check out the market. If it's a regular market, regular farmer's market or a you know monthly market, go check out. Go just, you know, have a browse. See other stalls there. See what other stalls have to offer. See the pricing, see the size, see the ground, and just have a little suss out on other businesses. <laughs> Number nine is rolling off of that is chat to other storeholders. So whether that be as a customer or as a storeholder yourself, chat to them, see what they recommend, see if they recommend any other markets, see how they go at this market if they're a regular, get their recommendations, see how they go, if they have any tips and everything, They will. you will learn so much off market holders and you'll make friends. I have made so many wonderful business friends through markets. Some of them will be watching this video, so thank you very much. But I am so grateful for that. And I am just always happy to chat to people and meet new people. And business friends really makes it so much better. <music> Last but very not least, just enjoy the market. It's a big day, it's a big time, it's a very exciting time, but just make sure that you have everything, make sure you give it a go. Don't be disheartened if it's not the day you thought it was gonna be. It's very hit and miss. We can never predict markets, it's so hard to tell, but I really, really recommend doing them. They are so much fun, so many benefits, and really it just helps promote your business and get your name out there. So definitely recommend doing markets. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. Hopefully it's kind of answered some questions for you and given some more insights on things that you might not have thought of before. If you have any other tips and tricks, please pop them down below. I'd love to hear them and read them. I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have, give it a big thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Stay gorgeous.